Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite fields, subfields, whatever, of mathematics. Um, today I would like to talk about the so-called TDA, topological data analysis, which is um, the subfield of mass, because it's topology, and topology is a subfield of mass. But it's also kind of a subfield of computer science or data science because it involves, well, data analysis, as the word says. So let's actually have a look what it is. And I'm not really formulating a theorem today. Well, I'm kind of formulating one, because there's something that is kind of essential, crucial, prototypical for top topological data analysis, the so-called persistent homology, which I have a theorem about, the, class the classification theorem, uh, the structures theorem, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, well, I can't really formulate it because I, I feel like it's a that's a homology theory and homology theories are notoriously difficult to define. So this one is not too bad, but it's still too difficult for this video. And I will do some kind of an analogy if you want uh, of what we are supposed to see. But actually, the main idea is not so difficult. So let's let's just let's just do it and let's just look what the main let's just see what the main idea is supposed to be. So here my favorite example of what topology studies. So usually the picture is, and I always complain about that, the picture is in topology that a, a donut is equal to a coffee mug. Uh, usually what people like to say is a donut is a torus, but a torus is not a donut because a donut is not hollow, a torus is hollow. Hopefully your donuts are not hollow. But I think also the better picture of what topology really does is, uh, stolen from Wikipedia, is uh, that the cow is equal to a sphere because well first of all that's easier a sphere is an easy object than a torus uh, a donut so I can draw a donut so here's a donut I can uh, I can draw a torus not a donut whatever here's here's a torus um, so the sphere is clearly an easy object so I can draw a sphere as well here's a sphere wonderful um, and also it's a little bit more surprising I feel like I kind of can believe <laughs> somehow that a donut and a coffee mug are somewhat the same, both of them have a hole, right? Kind of an obvious one. Uh, but a cow and a sphere, but, but both of them don't have any holes. So I guess, uh, yeah, that's why they are the same. Um, yeah, anyway, so there's a fun discussion. Uh, well, you can find it if you just Google about uh, what shape is a human. So if you count all the holes, if you want. Uh, so you can, by the way, push on most of the holes. So you just need to be careful what you, what you can what you count as a whole of a human. But it's not quite true what I'm showing here. A cow is not quite equal to a sphere. But anyway, that's the idea of topology. The topology studies is the study of shape. And let's just say in topology, a cow and a sphere are the same because you can just take the cow in your hand and deform it into a sphere in case you can take a cow into your hands. Um, anyway, so I've, I've ruffled a lot about topology now. So topology really is a study of shape. That's what it is. And topologists really never study an equation. They really, really study, well, well let's like say a circle as a shape. And the question that kind of started a topological data analysis is how useful is it to study shapes? And with useful, we obviously mean here because we're talking about data analysis in the study of data. Uh, so here's my favorite picture of this. So let's say you have a point cloud, something in R2, something in Rn, a lot of points usually, and that, that's data, right? You measure something and you get something in, in some high dimensional space or in some low dimensional space. In this example, here's my low dimensional space, it's just R2. But anyway, so we get a lot of data like point cloud. And you might ask the question, well, if the point cloud is not completely random, if it's just random, it's just random. But you might ask the question, uh, what type of shape does it actually form? So here in my example, the shape of my points somehow resembles the, the, the symbol R. And one way of doing this is the so-called alpha complex or alpha shape, where you just take a radius, uh, uh, balls of radius alpha, and kind of a little bit comp complicated, the alpha hull, so this guy here, is a complement of the union of the balls hitting no points. So you can kind of see that here, everywhere, this one is a good one. Here's a little ball of size alpha, and the, here's a little ball of size alpha, and so on. Here's it's a ball of size alpha. And everything that is kind of not hit by those, the complement is 
with this alpha shape and it's kind of a nice way of trying to find shape in in data and this kind of the idea of topological data analysis always try to find some version of shape in data like this data looks like a, a symbol r and as i said there are many many ways to do it and the most standard one by now would i would say this roughly originates in the 1990s is the so-called persistent homology which i'm not going to define i rather show you in animation what it does but let me just briefly talk about it so i missed the, the persistent homology very complicated name persistent homology is again you have some kind of point cloud and then you grow little circles around the points and whenever the circles hit you kind of connect them into a space and then you can measure well the zeros homology measures the number of connected components we'll see another picture in a second the first homology measures the number of circles the second homology measures the number of tetrahedrons uh, and so on and so on so let me just show you the the one dimensional one because it's kind of the easiest one to imagine so let's zoom in here into my not my in, in uh, animation but this animation so here we kind of note uh when everything kind of is born and when it dies i will go through the animation with you in a second now it died uh, but what died? Well, you grow those little circles around uh, the points, and now they form a bigger circle, right? The, the, because all the things hit, and that's why you mark some points here. There's something is born, and eventually the circle gets closed, and then something dies. And this is like the, the idea of this persistence. You grow those balls around the points with radius growing, and eventually you will see structure, and you measure when the structure arrives and when the structure disappears. That's essentially the idea of persistent homology. Here, another type of picture of this form. So H0 is the number of connected components. H1 is what we just saw, the number of circles. And um, H2 would be the number of tetrahedrons, which are always difficult to see in those pictures. So roughly here, uh, so here where the dotted line is, there should be two uh, circle type things which you can see here and here which were just born and one circle type thing which was born and then closed at one point that's a triangle for example around here where this line is we should see uh, something like one two three four five six seven eight connected components one two three four five six seven eight uh, 9, 10, did I miscount? I probably miscounted. And at this point, one of them is going to die. So eventually something will connect here and the other ones will survive. And there will be one that survives all the way from start to beginning, which is like the one component, one connected component will survive. H2 will then measure kind of the existence of tetrahedrons, which are always like a little bit difficult to see in those pictures. But this is called a barcode diagram. It measures when a new structure appears, it measures when it dies. And then it makes sense, it's a kind of a structure theorem of uh, persistent homology. So you can always do that. So you always have something that appears and something that dies, or it goes on forever. And the things that go on forever have an algebraic description as three modules, and the ones that appear at one point and die at one point are the so called torsion parts. And yeah, as, as I said, that this makes sense is kind of, a, is not kind of, is, is called the structure theorem of persistent homology and kind of topological data analysis kind of answers similar questions, studies similar properties, something kind of to, to find uh, the shape of, of data. That's, that is essentially the whole idea. And this is, turns out to be really useful. So um, I recently found a paper which used uh, the persistent homology to measure, to detect age differences in brain artery trees. Essentially, again, they ran it over it and whenever an artery tree closes into a circle, something happens in the, um, in the persistent homology because the persistent homology exactly measures those guys and you kind of make the same diagram as before, which is just a barcode diagram on its side. So this guy here is called the persistent diagram. And you can kind of see the difference between the young one and uh, kind of the older one. So one of them has somewhat 
la longer surviving uh, circles in the brain uh, artery trees, right? So this one dies off quicker. So that's probably the picture of the old brain, like uh, whatever my brain, and this one dies off much slower. Uh, what survives longer? That's probably what I should say. Survives longer because of the kind of the, the stretches go out further to the north, and that's more like a young brain, maybe more like like your brain. So topologi topological data analysis, in particular persistent uh, homology, is like like really everywhere nowadays. In even usually, as I said, uh, applied to point clouds, but in this case, even to well, let's say more fancy examples like brains. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.